Amen. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good to see you in God's house. Are you glad to be in God's house? Even if you came out of obligation, there's a blessing waiting for you. God always blesses a sacrifice. Hallelujah. We're going to go right to the Word of God this morning. So I've asked that they put up Ecclesiastes. This is the springboard we'll use today. Everybody together, loudly, vigorously, the word of the Lord. Ready? The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. That's it. The end of a thing is better than its beginning. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Let me understand that better, Lord. Even as I preach it today, let me understand it and let me live it and let me realize what a wonderful thing eternal life is. We are not dying. We have eternal life inside of us. May we begin to comprehend it today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you. You can be seated. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you something you have not heard from the world, and you won't hear it from the world. Ready? Things are actually getting better. Did you know that? Things are actually getting better. Not for them, not for what's out there, <clears throat> but for each of us. We're children of God. He started a process in us that will not stop until we see Jesus. It's getting better. We are growing in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. It's improving. We are being filled more with the Spirit of God as we yield to Him. We're getting stronger. Brothers and sisters, the day is getting brighter. Our future could not be more wonderful. Do not look out there and think that that is your life or your destiny. We're going up. We're leaving this. And when our time comes, whether it's individually, the Lord calls us home, or, or if the trumpet sounds and we all go together in the rapture, it's only going to get better. I hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard the things that God has prepared for them that love him. It has never entered the human heart, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed it unto us by his spirit. When we talk about life and joy and hope and peace, the world out there has no clue. They don't really understand what we're talking about. So I want you to know, according to Scripture, which is truth, whether it feels like it or looks like it in your life, you're actually getting better. Things are improving. I've said it many times, the whole book of Hebrews is about better. Jesus is better. Our hope is better. Our future is better, 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 better. So we cannot afford to let this world steal from us the promise and the joy of better. We're living it right now. You've heard me say this before. I was studying, uh, in fact, it was last night. I was very, very uncertain about what to preach. And I think the Lord just led me here. And I, I just went, wow. 
So when I give you the passage, you're going to say, oh, yeah, I know that one. Act like you don't know it. Because <clears throat> I think I'm probably going to tell you something that I've never seen in this passage before. It's 1 Kings chapter 19. It is when Elijah is running for his life. He's running from that woman, Jezebel. He has performed miracles, called down fire from heaven, killed hundreds of the Lord's <clears throat> enemies, and you would think that after that he would strut. Wouldn't you think that? He's not afraid of anything. He called fire down from heaven. He killed enemies. He's God's man. But instead of strutting, he's now running for his life. He's scared and depressed. And so the Lord encourages him. The Bible says in uh, verse 8, he arose and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of the food God gave him for 40 days and 40 nights. <clears throat> There he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, now listen carefully, what are you doing here, Elijah? <clears throat> so he said, well, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets. Killed him with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. So the Lord says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah proceeds to tell God what trouble he's in. Then the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And before, behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. <clears throat> I think they must have fogged this building this week because I got some of that fog in my throat. Oh, you, you didn't know we fogged the building this week? Yeah, there's a lot of dust in the air. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after a fire, a still small voice. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave, and suddenly a voice came to him and said, this is where it got me. The Lord asked the same question twice. What are you doing here, Elijah? I think Elijah missed the point when he asked him the first time, what are you doing here? Elijah thought that God meant, how did you get here? How did you get to this place? Have you asked that question? How did I get to this place? Elijah, because of this trauma he's going through, this fear, this depression, proceeds to tell the Lord how he got here. And so the Lord let him go through that whole thing, and then he got his attention, got his mind off the noise and the miraculous, and made him think and listen to the still, small voice, and then he asked him again, what are you doing here, Elijah? Follow me now. Now, not how did you get here, but now that you are here, what are you doing? Now that you're in this place, what are you doing? For many of us who find ourselves in this place here with whatever problem, fear, anxiety, hopelessness, emptiness uh, that we're experiencing, we want to tell the Lord the process. This is how I got here. 
this person did this and that person did that and this circumstance and on and on and the Lord already knows about all that. He knew exactly how you got to this depression. What drove you there? God sees everything and knows all things about you. He knows it. He's not asking you to explain to him how you got here. He wants to know, now that you are here, what are you doing? Are you murmuring? Are you complaining? Are you giving up? Or have you decided to praise me and walk in the coming victory? Act like you already have it. You do have it, it just hasn't manifested itself yet, you see. God heard you the first time you prayed. And so, if you look at that verse from Ecclesiastes, the end of a thing is better than the beginning. In this kingdom, you always move forward. You don't go back. You don't lose, you gain. This is the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are a member of it. You belong to him in heaven, and God is always moving you up and forward. So wherever you are now, this new one, this present trial that has uh, sucked the life out of you spiritually, where you find it extremely difficult, to be happy and to have joy, the Lord is saying, now that you're here, what are you doing? I need to ask you a question or two this morning, if you don't mind, but I'm going to borrow these questions from Scripture. Here's number one. Is anything too hard for the Lord? That's it? That, that's as loud as you can say that? Let me try it again. Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. Okay, thank you. Is there a condition or a situation in this entire world that God is not in charge of? No. All right. Is anything happening that God does not know about? No. Is God sitting back just letting it happen, then why are we so gloomy? This season we're in in this country, this time when we're looking to leadership, I need to ask you why so many of us have drawn faces and are worried and actually scared at what's going to happen. If our Father is the one in charge of the whole thing, and if our Father is working out all things for our good, all the mess that's going on out there is not independent of my Father, nor is it independent of me. He is working all things out for our good. And what it started out to be was just the base. God is moving us forward, and God is taking us up. There needs to be a revival of enthusiasm in the church. I don't care what it looks like out there. That's a nasty scene out there, friend. Have you, have you taken any time to take a whiff of the odor of sin that's wafting through our country? It smells like rot. And if you stay there long enough, that's all you'll smell. But God is asking us, you're there. What are you doing while you're there? Are you blending in with those who have no hope? Are you fitting in and marching along with those who are angry and upset and disappointed? 
Or have you forgotten who you are? And that you already have, I preach this all the time, you already have victory through Jesus Christ, and it really doesn't matter how that stuff ends up. What matters is where you end up and what you are doing while you are here. <laughs> Folks, we're talking about a God who made it all and knows it all. We cannot act like God is independent of this or has somehow walked away from this situation. We cannot think that this has caught God by surprise. God knows what he's doing. God is supporting everything. Now, let me just show you a couple of things you, you may not have pondered here. Jesus is supporting what's going on. He said, my father is working and so am I. You know what that means? God is not sitting up there watching it, twiddling his thumbs. God is actually involved in the machinations of everything that's going on. <laughs> Paul said in Colossians, he upholds all things by the word of his power. God is talking. Angels are moving. Situations are changing. Things are developing. And it really, if you think about it, the situation in this country is minor to what he's doing around the world. He is preparing the whole world for the coming of his blessed son, and I don't know if this is going to fit in or not, but I just feel like saying it right now. It's time to stop talking about a day when a, a man, an antichrist, is going to rule the world. Folks, that's never going to happen. He'll rule a portion of it, but there's only one that's ever going to rule this entire world, and his name is Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is permitting the evil that's going on right now. God is permitting evildoers to do their evil. Why would God do that? Because God has a process. So do, do I need to say that again? God is permitting evil. If he didn't want it, it wouldn't be here. If God didn't want evildoers, they wouldn't be here. But God has a plan, and God has a purpose. And Acts teaches us that God allows the nations to walk in their own ways for a certain time. But God is also restraining. God lets some things go, but he holds other things back. God's not going to let anything destroy his church. In fact, he'll use that which would intend to destroy, to strengthen. God can see something developing and interrupt it. I remember reading when Israel was about to be attacked by Sennacherib, the Bible, the Bible says that God spoke to Isaiah to tell Hezekiah, I'm going to make Sennacherib hear a rumor, and it's going to scare him, and he's going to run the other way. God has the power to make evil people think crazy stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> God can control what the leaders of a dark world are doing. I sometimes wonder if God doesn't get uh, tickled at the fact that all he has to do is blink his holy eyes and wicked people suddenly change what they're doing. They, they look like they have the advantage. They're about to attack. They're about to do this. And then they go, wait a minute. I don't, I don't know if I want to do that or not. And they just leave it alone. Why? Because God restrains. God also limits. God's going to let it go just so far. Just like he said to the oceans, I put you here. You can only come this far. 
I remember several years ago when I did those little podcasts, all, all of our uh, uh, millennials down in the office tried to tell me, you could be a cool dude if you'll just do a, is it a podcast? If you get a podcast going, man, people will follow you. And I had to get up every day and do a podcast. I, I didn't last long. You know, I heard of people that had a million followers. I got up to 82. <laughs> After all that work and prayer, I had 82 followers. And I went down and told whoever it was, I'm done with this. But I do remember a great one I did. Sandra and I were at the beach. And I got up early one morning and went down, down to the shoreline. And I stood right there and the sun was coming up. And I said... If you're worried about what's behind you, let me tell you something. There's an ocean, a roaring ocean behind me. It may even drown out my words in just a moment. But I don't even look back because I know it can only go so far. God has already put limits on it. Can I tell you that you don't have to look over your shoulder and look back and be afraid and wonder who's chasing you? No, sir, you can look straight ahead, and even though there's noise and roaring and threatenings, God has already put a limit on it. God can restrain it. God can limit it. Praise the Lord God. And you're here today because God protects. I say it often. I wish I could say it a different way. If you knew how many plans Satan had this past week to take you out and take you down, it would shock you. If you knew how many demons had been unleashed to try to tear your life up, you would be amazed. But God is a protective father, and God draws the line, and God makes sure that the evil one cannot touch us. I praise God for the scripture that says we are kept by the power of God through faith. Did you hear that or were you clapping? I said, I thank God for the scripture that says that we are kept by the power of God through faith. We're here today because God said you can't go any farther. We're here today because God said, don't touch one of mine, evil one. I'm here today because of the blood of Jesus. I'm here because of the spirit of the living God. Praise the Lord, church. But don't you, don't you be deceived either. Evil is going to be punished. A day of reckoning is coming. A day of judgment will arrive. It will arrive, arrive for the masses. It will arrive for the individual. I want to say to everybody who's had a somebody come into your life and tear up, steal, rob, threaten, ruin, that person will pay for every bit of it. That's a sure promise from God. Well, what if they get saved, Pastor? Okay, that's fine. That's good. But I'm telling you, if they don't, people reap what they sow. I did, you reap what you sow. Nobody in this whole world is going to get away with it. Not even the angels that sinned against God. He has reserved them in dark chambers for the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, God is going to punish evil doers. That day is coming. Brothers and sisters, God is going to reward those who do right and do good. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I love that scripture where Jesus said, anybody that has given up houses, land, father, mother, brother, or sister, for my sake in the gospels, listen to these words, shall reap a hundredfold 
now in this life. Have you read that one lately? A hundredfold now in this life. And in the age to come, you will have eternal life. Don't pass that by. God says you can get rewarded now. You don't have to wait till the Bema, the judgment seat of Christ. God is so good. God can't even hold himself back. He just wants to give and bless. He can't wait till you get up there in front of the judgment seat. He says, I'm looking at anybody right now who does the right thing, the good thing, the holy thing, the blessed thing. I'm looking at people who sacrifice and are, are, are obedient. And I promise you that you won't just skimp by, but I will bless you in this life. You got blessings you haven't even seen yet. God's done things for you you don't even know about yet. You've got a hundredfold coming to you in this life. And on top of that, eternal life with Jesus in glory. So, what are you doing here? Why are we not having our rallies? I think I'll have one tomorrow night at 7.05. I want to have a rally. Not going to get out of hand here now, but I'm going to have a rally. I hear about everybody else's rallies. And people come in with signs and act crazy and wait for speeches. And hey, I want to have a rally that matters. I want to have a rally for somebody that's good, decent, holy, eternal, just, righteous. I want to have a worship rally tomorrow night. We're going to pray. That's our prayer meeting. But we're going to sing and we're going to shout. I'm going to have a good time to, at the rally tomorrow night. Anybody want to join me at the rally tomorrow night? I don't know why we let them do all that stuff. We ought to be having a shouting time. God's been good to us, never failed us. We've got clothes on our backs. Let me just preach a minute. I've got clothes on my back. I've got food in my body. I've got eyesight. I can hear. I can walk. My heart is beating. I've got a little bit of money in my pocket. I've got a wife and family. I've got blessings 10,000 times 10,000 blessings. God's a good God. God's been good to me. Oh, I need to have a rally and say, he is worth it. He is worthy. Amen. You can stay standing. Y'all don't have a rally song right now, do you? <laughs> We're going to have one tomorrow night, I'll tell you that. In the, in the youth building. In the youth building. Where am I pointing? I always point the wrong way. Is it that way? Yeah, in the youth building. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? If we have been called you know he knew you before the foundation of the world and here you are God knew you'd be standing in that spot right there God knew the situation you'd be in right there before he made anything you were in his mind and on his heart and he's put you here for such a time as this. Oh, Sandra, what did you tell me yesterday? I don't remember who you said, said it. But this person said, we are too busy looking at the hammer and the chisel rather than the sculptor. 
We've concentrated more on the pain of the moment, the taking away, the hammering, the burning, the preparing, and we've forgotten to look at the one who's doing it because he wants us to be like Jesus. Jesus said to the woman who came in, Jesus was in this big room and there were lots of religious people in there plus some of his disciples and they were all arguing religion. But this little lady privately made her way into the room and as they stared in disbelief that a woman would do this, she began weeping and she broke open that alabaster box and she poured it on the feet of Jesus and dried his feet with the hairs of her, her head. While they're talking religion and politics, she said, I got something better to do. This man gave me life. And when they began to scold her, Jesus said, leave her alone. Listen to this. She has done what she could. Now, that's my responsibility. i got to do what I can. In the world I'm living, I've got to do what I can. Any opportunity I have to make a difference, I have to do it. And I cannot be caught up with religion and politics. Not when my Lord has done all this for me. He deserves my praise. Do you, do you believe this church? Slip your hands up in the air. Why don't you break an alabaster box right now? Why don't you anoint his feet? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I'm looking across the congregation. I'm looking at people who have buried children. I'm looking at husbands who've lost wives, wives who are without husbands. I'm looking at people, Lord, who have lost jobs, material things. Some have lost hope. Some of us don't know where to go next. But you spoke to me, Lord, yesterday. You helped me see something. How did I get here? It's not the point. It's what am I doing now that I am here? You are great and greatly to be praised. There's none like you, none higher, nobody beside you. I bless you with all that I have and am right now. My heart beats glory to Jesus. My breath rises up to the glory of God. My voice shall sing praises unto him. You are worthy, O Lord. Nobody deserves anything more than you, Lord Jesus. Anybody here ever had a miracle take place in your life? Slip your hand up. Has anybody here ever been healed by the power of God? Sure. She had cancer, didn't she? God touched her. Anybody here ever see the Lord move in a way that you, it shocked you? Anybody ever come through a period of depression? You didn't think you were going to make it. In fact, you didn't care if you made it or not. But here you are today. Anybody ever been touched so mightily by God that he took alcohol away from you, took drugs away from you, took all of these addictions away from you and here you stand today with outstretched arms blessing the name of the Lord. Who can raise a hand this morning and say, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Shout praise to God, that's what I've come to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. You'll need a ticket tomorrow night for the rally. 
Oh, that's right, yeah. It's a Bible. You'll have to have a Bible to come to the rally tomorrow night. They're going to check. Security's going to be high. <laughs> the Lord loves you. I do too. I bless you in his name. I thank you for coming today, being a part of this church. I thank all of you for your gifts and talents that you've given to the Lord. I thank you. They'll never know the hard work you guys put into this so you can sing to Jesus in front of them. I thank all the security people around here that keep this campus safe. Thank you so much. I thank all the teachers that are with children today that won't get to come in here. I thank you for the nursery workers who are changing diapers and mixing formula. I thank you, for, uh, Lord, for the elders and the greeters and the council and the leadership and the staff. Lord, we're just a blessed people. And I bless you back. Bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Lord bless you.